So let's do our our usual. So are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? Anybody have any adjustments? Um, I got a quick update for the Hardwick PD traffic patrol thing. We can okay. just a short update, nothing to vote on, but. Okay. Um, and then I have an update on the, um, uh, the zoning um, ordinance or the zoning, um, uh, what do you call it when they're breaking the ordinance? Uh, anyway, oh. on Ainsworth Road. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a little update on that. Um, can't think of anything else. Um, so any public comment at all? Hearing none, we'll move on. Hello, Tegan. Hi, Tegan. Um, so um, do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? So, so moved. I guess I'll second it. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, so those are approved. Um, and then do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the May 24th, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. <clears throat> Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I know Chris is still up in Maine. Um, so we may or may not see him um, tonight. Yeah, I saw his thing said he was may or may not have uh, internet access. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Bonnie is not here yet. Uh, let's move on to the town clerk's report. Or actually, yeah. Put Robin right on the spot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I um sent Kim Silk the um unlicensed dogs for okay. both years that were supposed to be licensed in 2021 and 2022. Mm -hmm. So for 2021, he's got 23 to deal with, and 2020, he's got 26 to deal with. Okay. And then. Everybody's heard that we made our 8.2% for the COVID, right? Yeah, so they were lifted all the restrictions. Right. Yeah. I had a doctor's appointment last week, and my doctor is Dr. Matthews at Plainfield Health Center. Mm -hmm. And he told me to get in touch with the select board in the fire department to see if they would be willing to do a shock clinic here in Woodbury. It would be Johnson & Johnson, one and done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And would that happen like at the town hall, do you think? Yes. Or yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, fine by me. Yeah, let me talk to the fire department people. We have eight, we have uh, six of us that can actually administer the shots if they need okay. people to ah. do that. Okay. We're certified. Yep. Great. But let me you talk know. to the fire department people and make sure I don't want to speak for everyone. Yeah, and you'll have to give me a date or dates that would be yep. good for you guys. Okay. Oh, today's the 14th. So Robin, how are you and Brandy feeling about the uh, lifting of the restrictions? That was Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Everybody that's been coming in so far has been fully vaccinated. Okay. So are you going to kind of open up the town office to as, as, pre what was that Brandy? We're going to have a party. Going to have a party. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, I'm coming down tomorrow with a list of things. So, <laughs> yeah. To me, I mean, as long as people are comfortable, my my opinion is all the all the conditions are gone, so we should probably start operating back to normal. Yep. Yep. And we'll yeah we'll talk about our meetings um, yep. before the night's over. Okay. If if I may interject for a second, I got to say, Mike, I think you have a different definition of party than Brandy does. Probably right. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a generation. I'm thing, with Brandy. Huh? I'm with Brandy. Is that what Chuck said? <laughs> and Diana's been showing me more on and more on the land recording, so I'm, I'm going to Brandy. Brandy. with that. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's about it for me. Right. Okay, that was easy. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could move on to the town treasurer. All righty. Oh, sorry, Robin. I think you're going to have to turn yours on. 
Can, can you hear me? Woo! <laughs> Sounds like a party already. <laughs> what are you guys doing down there? Got the reverb on. <laughs> I'm going to just check my emails to see if there's anything from Bonnie. But you guys yeah, go I ahead. I can hear. Exactly I can hear what I want to be back to normal. Echoing. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah. Robin has her mic off, so that should take care of the echo, I think. Uh oh. All righty. So, for income, we ended up getting over the last three weeks um, a $5,000 grant for the Conservation Commission. Um, we took in fleet permits, still, library donations, records restoration. The total of income was $6,000. $693.30. Um, delinquencies in the last three weeks, uh, $4,945.89. Um, we also ended up getting a straight, uh, state of Vermont transfer into our checking um, for the reappraisal fund, which is putting us up and over. Uh, to reappraisal, $107,679.73. Um, so I'm, ex I'm expecting them knocking on our door for the Rio Town reappraisal um, at any time. Um, we have, a, we ended up getting our green up grant money back. I'll be doing that deposit um, after this session. Um, I have a, a, the Valley Lake grant that um, me and Michael will be finishing up um, now that the checks are cut this week um, and getting that hopefully back this fiscal year, I'm hoping, so we can clean that up. Mm -hmm. um, so, Brandy, I, I brought that file home. I saw it in the... Uh, in the or signed off for. Yeah. Michael's I, I brought, talking, but I can't yeah. hear him. You can hear me? Can you hear me now? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I, I brought that file home just to look at it, but um, I'll bring it back down tomorrow morning and, and we'll um, take a look at it together. Put it together. Perfect. Okay. It was um, one check that I cut for um, Minosh that has to do with it, um, but we'll go over payroll. Mm -hmm. um, I printed, I tried getting as much ready as I could for you so we can go yeah. over it together and hopefully seal it up. Yeah. Um, so I definitely wanted to do the raises and have them signed off. So there's no question, there's no glitch as far as amounts that are gonna be applied as of July 1st for um, the new raises. Thank you, thank you. Um, so what I wanted to finish up, since the policy is still being changed, it's not approved yet, um, uh, we have, a few people that are concerned about their vacation time. Um, Diana's got time accrued mm -hmm. well, uh, for vacation time. time, paying it out. Um, Peter's got time. Timmy's got time. So what I would like is for the select board to make um, a motion and vote on it that they be paid out for their time if we are going to be going to a full-time Full time um, as of July 1. Otherwise, because everybody's benefits apply as of July 1. I'll have you turn it back up now, Robin. Please and thank you. Um, yeah, we probably would have to, if we're going to vote on something like that, we would have to warn it. Um, Which is fine. That's good. We can do it on the 28th, but as long yeah. as it's in motion. Um, yeah. So that I can cut, well, no, that's kind of be kind of late because I have to cut payroll that day. Uh -huh. um, yeah, well, let's talk about it tomorrow. Um, I, we can't really do that without it being warned. Um, but we can, we can discuss it just as kind of a general principle. So I know that Peter, I spoke to Peter about his accrued um, the vacation time and how much he could accrue. I mean, he can carry that over. Obviously, if, um, you know, once we 
do this third full-time hire. Um, and if Peter is not, is no longer on the road crew, then we would have to pay him for that. Um, but, and any, and any other mind, thing? Yeah. My concern is as of July 1, there's all the sick time, all the personal time and more vacation added to it. Right. It's it's not it's not appropriated or not it's not it's just one whack. As of July first, yeah. you've got your two weeks, three weeks, and then and then it's done. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I um want it set in stone so that um yeah. So it sounds like what we should do is um yeah, that's a good question. What what we should do? Um, so at this point, the select board is not ready to, for the hiring of a full time. No. I know. I know you haven't gone out for hiring, but um, in that time frame, there's no way to get this done. And no. 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 Nope. So um, let me check with VLCT about this. Um, it it may be that um, that we're just stuck. Um, um, I don't know for sure, but I can check check in with the LCT um, and see what they what they have to say about it. Um, and this would basically be Tim and um, Peter that would be affected. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, this is just me thinking off the top of my head. If it is just Tim and Peter, and neither, neither one of them end up being hired, um, in all fairness, it might be just a kind of a severance package for the fact that we've kept them on for so many years as part timers, and uh, they weren't, and then they weren't hired as the third full time person. I mean, I would. It's not going to be a lot. It's kind of prorated. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't, um, I would feel okay with just, especially if there's no other legal um, way to, um, to arrange this, which I don't think there is. Um, uh, you know, I, I would just feel okay with giving them that accrual and, and the payment. Um, that's, that's myself speaking personally. Um, it won't be a lot of money um, and it might just be a way for them to, to kind of hold them over until they get other jobs, if, if that's the situation. It's gonna be the situation for one, at least one, if not both. So um, that's just me thinking off the top of my head. Paul, I, I'm not, and Chuck, I'm not sure what your thoughts are yeah, on I'm that. sorry, I, I deal with a transmitter problem for our radio, so I had to get on the phone there for a second. Um, uh, I'm kind of in the same opinion with the, if they have carryover, it's going to carry over. And if they're hired, they're going to carry over. If it, they're not hired, then we would uh, pay upon separation. That'd be my thought. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what our new policy and our intent is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, I, was Diana's leave time an issue also? Yeah. Does well, she it's going to have to be a payout. Yeah, if she's getting done, it would be the same deal. We just pay out when the when the employee uh, separates. Yeah. You know, technically with Diana, we could pay her out. She's no longer the town clerk, so we right. could just Doesn't pay her. Doesn't leave time, right? She has a lot of accrued vacation time and leave time, and we could just right. pay her out for the fiscal year twenty one or. <clears throat> Right, um, but does she accrue pay, uh, leave as the assistant town clerk? Very minimally, yes. I don't think any, right, Rotten? Uh, yeah, no, she no. doesn't. So okay. then the proper thing to do is at, what we should have done is at the, when that employment status changed and we no longer pay leave time as we would pay, pay out the leave time, in my opinion. Yeah. And the vacation time too. She has quite a bit of vacation time. Yeah, that's what we way. wouldn't pay. We not we don't pay sick. We would just pay comp time and vacation time, annual leave. Yeah. So yeah. that should be done, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. And that you know, you you could just go ahead and do that, Brandy. That's yep. kind of that's standard practice. There's nothing. 
Yeah, and we're going to be codifying that in, when we finalize this policy too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. in the next yeah. payroll, um, I will get everybody's time paid out. Um, yeah, so it's within the fiscal year and it's done and over with. So, and you know, as far as, you know, like Peter was wondering if he could carry over the uh, vacation time that he has, because um, I apparently, you know, from what from my conversation with him, um, you know, other road crew members are using up some of their accrued vacation time and he, you know, doesn't want to put the road crew at jeopardy um, right. by taking yeah, I mean, we time. can carry over up a hundred and some hours, right? Well, um, in, the, in the new policy, yeah, 160, it's prorated. So I think for a full time, it's 160 hours. So, um, you know, the part time based on the prorated um, rate, it would be about 80 hours. That right, so he could get, carry that time over, yeah. Carry that time over. Yep, and if we end up not you know, hiring one or neither, then, um, then, then we, would, we pay, would just pay, pay that out at separation. Yep, yep. Does that sound? Sound like a good way to move forward on that, Brandy? Yep. Okay. And then as always, if somebody doesn't like that, just have them come see us. You know, we can come to a meeting and we'll talk about an executive session. Mm -hmm. Anything else at all, Brandy? I did do a transfer of 13,000 today to cover for AP um, costs. Um, other than that, yeah, that's about it. You guys are okay. way too easy today. <laughs> um, I noticed that, well, go ahead, Brandy. Go, did you have, no, okay. So I noticed that Bonnie is here. Um, so we'll um, kind of turn, turn the meeting over to her. Um, I think all of you have met Bonnie before. She's the executive director of the Regional Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And for my knowledge, she seems to be the most knowledgeable person about what's going on with the American Rescue Plan Act as it relates to Vermont and Woodbury. Um, so, um, you know, I've invited her. She offered originally, and, and I invited her to, to join us um, to kind of explain um, what's happening with the AR. PA, ARPA is what it's called. Um, it seems to change pretty periodically. Um, what, and Bonnie can kind of bring us up to date on that. And then if, if we have any questions at all um, for her, um, I'm sure that she would be glad to answer them. So, so Bonnie, I will give you the uh, screen. Um, and it's all yours. <laughs> Okay, and first I will apologize for being late. My home connection was not cooperating this evening. So I do apologize. Um, I was not going to do a visual presentation, if that's all right. I was just mm -hmm. that's fine. with you all. Um, the American Rescue Plan Act, as you know, designated some money for municipalities that will pass through from the federal government to the state and then to municipalities in Vermont. There are four, sorry. And my phone is also frozen. Sorry, it's, I'm just gonna power off. Apparently I'm not going to power off. <laughs> we'll see if that works, but it may just have reset it. I don't know if we've had a surge or what, but all the, the electronics are going haywire. Um, so there are four main categories of types of projects, eligible activities. The first is to support public health expenditures, things that are related to COVID that you might think about. Um, the second one is addressing its negative economic impacts caused by specifically the public health emergency. And if you've done any FEMA claims you'll understand that it's the public health emergency, not necessarily other types of outcomes that are related to this disaster. The next one is loss of public sector revenue. So that would be 
something, uh, I mean, Montpelier is the easy example. During the legislative season, they recoup a lot of funding from parking meters and fines. But because the legislature didn't meet in person, they lost all that revenue. If you have those kinds of activities where you could prove that you lost revenue because of it, you can use this funding to replace that revenue. Um, the next one is premium pay for essential workers. So similar to before, fire, rescue, folks like that might qualify um, for premium pay. And then investing in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure, necessary improvements, things that might help you. So for instance, broadband, that's an easy one. Kids are doing remote schooling. Tele, uh, hospitals are, and doctors are doing telehealth. Those things are very clearly related to the public health emergency. So within those broad categories, um, US Treasury wrote some guidance and gave towns ideas for the kinds of projects or activities you might do. And Michael, I didn't ask you if you had provided that to the select board. I think Grace might have sent it to you way back when. I think I, I think I have passed it on, yes. Okay, so they, they did some specific bullet points to give everyone ideas. It's not the only things that are eligible, but it sends you down the track. So for instance, the one about negative economic impact can be delivering assistance to workers and families. So if you think about how the, um, the governor is removing the emergency order on Wednesday morning, when that happens, all the food support that's been out there for families who are struggling will go away because um, a lot of it is being funded through FEMA and Agency of Human Services programs related to the pandemic. So towns could choose to provide some funding in that direction. Um, supporting small businesses. So in that, I usually use the Mad River Valley as an example, their tourism industry crashed and perhaps it did in Woodbury as well. But when it did, a lot of their small restaurants, their lodging facilities, they're really struggling now to stay afloat. The towns there could use some of their funding to do um, some sort of program to help those businesses get back on their feet. So within each of those pieces, Treasury has issued some guidance about what might be eligible. When you talk about these types of activities, one of the things that we're encouraging everyone to do is um, you'll be seeing a form come your way eventually that says when you choose to spend your money, make sure it hits eligible activities and the guidance that US Treasury has released about how to spend the money so that if you're audited, and we expect a lot of audits to come out of this at a federal level, you've at least got your proof for how you thought it was related, then they can argue with you about whether they agree with yours. But if you've kind of followed that guidance, you're more likely to be successful in that kind of um, discussion during an audit. The other kind of guidance that's out there is to treat it like fund accounting, as if it were, it is a special grant. Some towns are choosing to put the money in a separate account, but at least at a town books level, having that money set aside so that you can track it uh, either on your balance sheet as advanced funds or as a separate project on a, a profit and loss type of statement, something so that the town very clearly knows at any given time how much money it has and how much money it's committed to projects. The one aspect, I guess I don't know how deep you'd like me to go into the individual categories as far as project ideas. Um, at some point, I'm going to ask you what your ideas might be for spending the money. We have a few. Um, you know, we have talked about um, a contribution to CV fiber for um, the broadband component. Um, We've talked about it um, fixing up, uh, making the town hall into a space that we can hold different town uh, 
government entity meetings like the select board and other like planning commission or other the space you've been in the space at the town office before bonnie it's it's a little it's pretty tight um and we're just i guess we're kind of feeling that with this sort of new normal that having a space that allows for a little bit more room um would be um would be uh, beneficial and 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 wise to have. The town hall is basically an, an old historical building with that's basically a shell. Um, in the winter, it's very hard to heat. Um, there's no kind of uh, connectivity to for any of this uh, modern age electronic stuff. When HCTV comes to record or, or to have live meetings there, they run a cable over to the fire station. Um, so it that's a space that um, we've talked about making it into a, a new town meeting space um, and it's because of the pandemic that we're looking at that in that way um, so those are kind of the two um, sort of the two things that we've discussed as a town this uh, you're mentioning of food assistance you know has me thinking of maybe checking in with our our local food shelf to see um, if there's if they could use some assistance. Um, so, um, and I think part part of meeting with you tonight is just to get a better sense of what we could be asking for. Um, I mean, I've read the guidance too, and um, the CV fiber thing seems to fit right in with with. Uh, you know that's that's pretty clear to me the town hall is a little less clear but there is i think we could make a valid point with that um so okay so let's start with cv fiber i know okay. that they are just looking at their meeting minutes and i don't recall if any of you are their representative but they are crafting an agreement so that if towns want to use some of this funding and pass it to them um, they're crafting an agreement that they can put in place, you know, talking about how and what they do it. So they're already headed down the path. You'll probably get a knock on the door eventually. Um, all the member towns are likely to get that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I think that one, yes, definitely broadband will fit into it. It's an easy match to make. It'll just be a matter of the passing mechanism and how closely the U.S. Treasury wants to tie the funding that Woodbury passes to CV fiber, if you passed it, mm -hmm. to service provided in Woodbury, right. as opposed to pulling it and the first project on the ground, and I'm going to make this up, is in Cabot or right. Washington or something like that. So how closely the tie is between what you contribute and the actual service that happens in Woodbury could be a stumbling block for them. Okay, so Bonnie, if we were to contribute money, could we kind of, you know, hold the purse strings or at least have a condition that, okay, we're gonna give you X dollars, but if we do that, you have to um, implement X dollars worth of, um, you know, high-speed internet in Woodbury. Is that is that a possibility in that exchange rather than just giving them a donation for their general fund? It is a possibility whether that financially works. The money that Woodbury, I realized I didn't pass this out. We have the, the final numbers came out this week. So Woodbury's municipal allocation is, where did we go? I remember it was 90 something thousand. Yeah, 92,439. So, if they have to bring fiber all the way out to you, that might not be enough. Right. I think so. it's something like a million dollars a mile or something. Don't hold me to that, but it's pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So you may not actually be able to get much service in Woodbury for 92000 unless they're able to combine it with some of the money the legislature is able to pass to them. So you might want to have conversations about where Woodbury Falls in CV Fiber's service priorities. They'd like to serve the whole region, but that becomes, or fill the gaps in the region, but that becomes about um, 
how much money they're able to do and how quickly they're able to put fiber on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you could share, like I've been, um, you know, the original amount that was sort of estimated that Woodbury would get was around $258,000. So could you explain what's happened since that initial um, yeah. carrot was dangled? And, and Wasn't the, there supposed to be some county money that gets divvied up to? That's what that extra was. Yeah. There was some county money and when the energy money came around in 2010, 2013, it was something similar, but targeted to energy. Um, Vermont was successful in essentially having the money passed to regional planning commissions who worked with towns on energy issues. Um, when we saw the county, the federal legislators, the state government, everybody said Vermont doesn't have county government. So the legislature and governor worked a deal where they were gonna pass that county portion to municipalities based on population. Your 92,000 would then have been tripled and you would have been in the 200 and some odd thousand dollar range. The treasury has decided that the county court system in Vermont counts as county government, as a um, general purpose unit of government. Therefore, the mechanism to pass to municipalities directly, they've said no to that, that it has to go through the court system first. There's still a lot of conversations happening. There is at least a hope that the court system might take the portion they need and pass the rest to municipalities. The challenge is that you can't receive a portion that's bigger than 75% of your budget of 2020, the year 2020. Um, and so I don't know offhand what the county court system's budget is and what that what 75% looks like. I'm betting it's less than the money that was coming to municipalities, but I don't know. So that's the hiccup that happened with the county money. There's a whole lot of smart people still working on that to see if there's some way they can pass it through. But right now the treasury isn't budging. Um, yeah, that's too bad. Cause my experience when they, the feds pass money through the state is always the state sucks up the lion's share and you, you're getting the crumbs is very difficult. In, that's my fear with the, the court system. Yeah, with the, right. With the county money and the municipal money coming through the state of Vermont, the state wasn't allowed to take anything for it. Um, but that doesn't stop at a county level. They probably have some COVID related needs as well. So think of what you just said about the town hall. They might have some buildings that need upgraded as well. Yeah, they'll probably use up the money has been my experience. <laughs> I'm thinking of Bonnie, when you're dealing with like the VCOM money, when that came through the feds, the state of Vermont's used almost 90% of it. So from a broadband perspective, it could work. You'd wanna have some conversations. I think that CV Fiber did, I know that CV Fiber did kind of a, I'll call it a strategic plan, but they really did a systems analysis and they prioritized um, where they could put service on the ground first um, based on a business model. If you think about it, if you start with the hardest to serve least number of customers, you're not getting any enough payments back to fund the next step. Right. So they set up a bottle that is proprietary information on their part. So I haven't seen it. I don't know if some of you have, um, but you may be able to talk to them about where is Woodbury mm -hmm. at and how, how could you leverage this into being? They are thinking, they're planning for it quite a bit now. When I think about the idea of the town hall, that would likely work that will fit under the public facilities pace. Um, so from a positive perspective, yes, you've outlined some reasons and you definitely wanna document it. From the caution perspective, when you do upgrades, why are those upgrades necessary for public meetings? Not for other types of events you might wanna hold in the town hall, but for public meetings. So do you need a restroom? Sure. Do you need more than one restroom for public meetings? I don't know if you do for events, but I'm going to assume you are. 
So you might have to think through each piece of the project before you head down the road of funding it and ask, why is this necessary for the public health emergency response of the pandemic? Um, <clears throat> sorry, and I'm gonna put my glasses on to look at my cheat sheet here. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the one that was rebuilding public sector capacity. No, there's one in here related to public facilities. So anyway, um, that's the caution on doing a town hall. I do think it's possible. I know that I think it was in Swanton with the CARES Act funding they actually took their police department and stripped down the inside and build it back up so that they could create more space uh, between desks. So it was in part remodeling mm -hmm. in order to meet that. Mm -hmm. So you might wanna think about it in the same way. What must be done to occupy it as meeting space versus what would you like to do to really make it effective facility for the entire community? Mm -hmm and walk through it that way. Um, food shelf ideas, um, similar to passing money to CV Fiber, people are looking at the Vermont Food Bank, Capstone, their local food shelf, and considering whether there's something they could do there. Whoever you pass it to also has to use it for some of these eligible uses. It can't just be goodwill to the food shelf how are they responding to the COVID pandemic? Mm -hmm. What are they doing more of? What are they doing differently because of the, the pandemic itself or the public health um, effects? Um, they could also be addressing those negative economic consequences. More people need food. That's another way to argue it into success. Um, other towns, let's see, water, wastewater, some communities are looking at uh, community septic systems as opposed to an individual house septic system. Since the county money disappeared, that is most of the money communities get from the municipal share isn't enough to really tackle a wastewater problem unless they have a <coughs> pipe that needs upgraded. There, there is a question I have about that, Bonnie, and you know, um, the town has been working on a new town plan and, and you know, one of the um, components of, of part of the town plan is, is some type of infrastructure within the Woodbury Village that would um, address waste and wastewater. Um, and you know, obviously the th first thing that the town would need to do is some kind of feasibility study. I, I'm wondering if this, this uh, ARPA money might help pay for a study for, for such a thing um, that, that might not happen until, you know, way ahead in the future of the town, if at all. It could be. It's the water and sewer infrastructure. I haven't seen guidance yet to see if the planning for that can be done. Mm -hmm. But the general guidance is anything you might be able to fund through the state clean water revolving loan fund for water and wastewater would be eligible um, under the ARPA money. Okay. And so in that respect, you can get planning money from those. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know Chance has uh, his hand up. So Chance, did you have a question? Yeah, actually, I, I did have a couple of questions. Uh, Bonnie, I, I come to you here with a couple different hats. Uh, as, as a fire chief and president of the fire department, I was glad to hear you say emergency personnel, um, but also as the emergency management director, um, I'm working on a couple different proposals for the select board on different ways to spend this money and the food shelf was mentioned, which I think is a phenomenal idea. The question I had is that, isn't there also an ability for, let's use the food shelf as that example, to provide the food shelf with money, not only to address the food insecurities needs of the towns, but also to pay for proper PPE for the food shelf volunteers. And on that note, would the volunteers at something like the food shelf or the workers on the town highway crew 
or our treasurer or town clerk, would those people also qualify as essential personnel for a one-time payment through this? It wasn't- I, I rattled off like 15 questions, sorry. Yes. No, it, so I'm gonna start with the one-time payment. It wasn't a one-time payment, it was um, premium pay. Some people call it hazard pay, but they're trying to not use the word hazard in the pandemic, um, but some sort of premium pay. And so the guidelines for under the CARES Act for premium pay is that you either had to have some sort of direct exposure, fire, rescue, you're going, you don't really have a choice. You can outfit yourself, but you're going to fight that fire. You're going to respond to that heart attack, something like that without saying, I'm sorry, have you been vaccinated for COVID? Okay, I'm not going to treat you. You just had to go. So you'd have to ask that same question for town clerks, town treasurer, or any town staff or food shelf staff. Um, but it was over and above either a direct kind of exposure like that, or you, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, you did something different. So you took your town treasurer and instead of them doing their treasurer duties, they went to hand out PPE to local citizens. It was a different duty than their assigned duties. And it, that extra duty was related to the COVID-19 pandemic in some way. Um, so that is part of it. And I'm thinking back to the rest of your question. So could you do it? You'd wanna be really careful outside of those defined categories that treasury outlined. They did, um, sorry. They basically gave you some categories that are, here we go, staffing at nursing homes, hospitals, and home care centers workers at farms, food production facilities, grocery stores, and restaurants. So that may fit with food shelf. Janitors and sanitation workers, public health and safety staff, truck drivers, transit staff, and warehouse workers. Child care workers, educators, and school staff, and social and human services staff. They essentially consider those to be right there in their pretty easy to make eligible for this. Um, but they're also suggesting, strongly recommending that premium pay is to be directed at low income workers. So they are trying to raise votes here um, for the folks who were hardest hit by the pandemic from a, a job perspective, from a wage perspective, or from a health perspective. Um, and then another kind of caveat is if that premium pay would increase a worker's total pay above 150% of the greater, of either the state or county average annual rate, you're going to have to do specific justification. So I'm going to back off that specific and say, um, if you participated in the VLCT webinar, they said, go slowly and go deliberately. Initially, before the treasury guidance would released, we thought you had three years to figure it out, put it in order and fully spend it. Treasury has said, you've got those three years and as long as you've obligated the money, it's under contract, um, either like passing the money to CV Fiber, you have a written contract um, or buying something, you have an additional two years through December 31st, 2026. So you really have a five-year span to fully expend the money. Um, so now we're slowing everybody down and saying, be deliberate, think through to some of those long-term goals you're trying to accomplish. It's one-time money. If you're starting something new, how are you gonna sustain that after the fact? Or is it something new that's absolutely unnecessary right now, but doesn't need to be sustained in the long term? So um, a lot of the guidance is now go slow and be deliberate in deciding how to do it. Consider all your options. So as a, as a follow-up question to that, Bonnie, I guess for the select board's benefit now, mm -hmm. um, 
if somebody like me comes forward with all these proposals, which I'm sure there will be a million of them, when the select board finds, say, four or five things that they really like or one thing that they really like, is there going to be somebody like you or maybe the Treasury that's going to really be more definitive for them so that they know they're not going down the, 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 the dark road that nobody wants to go down before that federal audit comes through? The word you're not going to keep wanting to hear, the words are, it depends. <laughs> um, Treasury will keep issuing guidance as more and more questions, is this eligible, is that eligible, come back to them. Uh, they're trying not to do it in the way they did for the CARES Act funding where every week or two they were issuing new guidance. A lot of it was answered there, um, but they will be issuing more and more guidance. So things should become clearer over the next three years. And then the other thing the Vermont legislature has done is they've allocated funding to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and to the regional planning commissions to help towns. And the way our roles are divided, if you think of VLT, VLCT has the attorneys and the insurance company. And so they're gonna be providing risk management advice. Some of the, the more global monetary advice like um, tracking these funds separately so that um, anybody who walks in the door knows exactly what the town spent. They're gonna be providing some legal advice. Um, so they've got quite a bit of that. They'll do the trainings and the webinars and hold them statewide so all towns can access the same um, workshop. The Regional Planning Commission's job is to meet with towns one-on-one -on -one and help you both generate ideas and develop those ideas into eligible activities. So what I just did with the town hall, think about this when you're doing it. None of us can tell you, yes, that's an eligible activity unless it's on the US Treasury site or guidance as an eligible activity, but we can help you walk through that form I'm talking about that will be created. It says, think through, is this really an eligible activity or are we trying to stretch a little bit into gray areas? Um, and how far into the gray area are you comfortable going knowing that if you're audited by the US Treasury and they say, so sorry, that wasn't eligible, you'd have to pay the money back. Mm -hmm. So we'll do as much as we can to help you do that, but only the town gets to make the final decision on is this eligible or is it not? The town and the federal government. That, that helps answer a question that I had on, you know, I knew that there were different projects that might not exactly fit to the T, the definitions that were provided and, and that it was a possibility of kind of uh, stretching that a little bit like often is done with different grants. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and then I wondered, well, who actually decides if a project is eligible or not? Is there like a board at the treasury that says, okay, this one is good. And um, so I was going to ask you that question tonight, and you just answered it. We won't really know until the audit happens, and if right, already, then you did it wrong. If we did Welcome it, yeah, we went down land. the wrong path, then um, somebody's going to not. So be we're going to have to be really careful woods. with what we do there, Michael. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you make sure have, it fits within the lines. Right. But you do have some avenues. You mm -hmm. know, when we talk to you, and I start hearing about, I'm actually thinking about. A town asked me, Duxbury asked me about a generator because if they need to shelter people in place, they needed a bigger facility, they needed a generator. They had some actually very good, or they needed a switch for their generator. Is that wow. eligible? It might be. So we'll feed those kinds of questions up. VLCT will feed questions up. Um, the state will feed it up because the state's got to figure out its own spending. And that's why that's when Treasury says, here's some common questions. I'm going to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. So it will be a back and forth and back and forth. Unless there's something so clearly eligible, you're probably not spending your money tomorrow. You're developing your plan. Mm -hmm. The other kind of guidance out there from both from Treasury as well as the National League of Cities and Towns is to involve your residents in making those decisions. Um, so was it Chance or Paul said, you know, people are gonna be feeding all these ideas. 
the guidance is ask them, how should we spend this money? Ultimately, the select board will probably have to make those decisions since you're the purse strings. Um, but what ideas do your citizens have? Get all the ideas on the table and really help let people think creatively about what could be done for the future of the town or for a current situation. And then sort through those and figure out, well, what's eligible and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have the, these all appear to be eligible, how far will the money go? Mm -hmm. um, just, I have a question actually for Skip. Um, and I'm assuming you can hear me even though your camera and mic are off. Um, you know, we're getting ready to do another survey for the town plan. I wonder if we could have that question on the survey. Seems like it would be timely. It would be not really part of the town plan, but if we're conducting a survey, um, again, I wonder if that could be on there. It could be, Michael, but if you can recall, the uh, focus of the survey is for the second homeowners right. in Woodbury. It's not like a general survey like we did back in December and January. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it could be added you know, because it's still in draft form and I could ask Claire Rock to uh, insert that question into it. Uh, but I don't know, is it worthwhile to do another survey? It, just it might based? be better to keep it separate, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just trying yeah, to get two birds so. with one stone. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it might be. Yeah. And, you know, we could certainly do it as a planning commission, send mm -hmm. out a second survey. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, because these are, again, one-time funds and, you know, we could certainly spend the money. I know where I would want to spend it, but, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I'll be sending that along to the select board. Okay. But, <laughs> I think I know what that'll be, but. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Brandy, you had your hand up? Is that still on the same lines of that, that um, server monkey? that, that uh, Laura had created a while back that was able to click a link and then you can fill out the survey? It is a survey monkey. Yeah. Yeah, it's in that format, Brandy. It's a cloud-based survey. And we could have a special meeting too now that we're allowed to do that. Um, so that, that, I don't know, we could do both actually because sometimes those meetings, nobody shows up and surveys yeah. that go out to everybody tend to get a better response, but. They do. Um, we'll figure that out. Um, uh, any, any other comments, Bonnie, or any? Something about the uses you absolutely cannot spend this money on. Okay, that would be There good. are two very defined ones. The first is you can't reduce your tax rate <laughs> as a result of this. So um, you can't say I'm going to use this funding so that I can lower the tax rate for citizens. If I replace this pot of money with this and I replace this, like our annual donation to the food shelf, great, we're gonna use this money to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you do that often enough and you reduce your tax rate, that is expressly prohibited. It's mm -hmm. not meant to reduce your tax rate. The second part is that you cannot use it to deposit into a pension fund Think about the state retirement fund and um, what the state's been facing as far as underfunding that. States and municipalities can't replace that funding. You can't put it into a pension fund. Now, if you're talking about um, a certain project where a town employee works on some effort and when you pay them, there's a retirement benefit that's part of wages, normal wages and benefits. But you can't simply take a chunk of this money and underwrite a pension fund deficit. So those are the two absolutely prohibited things that many states would have done if Congress hadn't prohibited it. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I was trying to think of what other projects our efforts have I heard of from towns? Most of the larger, Berrytown, Berry City, um, Northfield, 
Waterbury, they're all looking at water and wastewater infrastructure projects that they had on the books that are designed and ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Pillar's talking about uh, replacement of lost revenues. They're waiting to see one idea they had is, can you replace your lost revenues? Does the money then lose its federal identity and you can use it elsewhere? <clears throat> and the answer when we asked that question was mm, probably not, that there is still some caveats on that. So they're waiting for some extra guidance. Most of our smaller towns are not gonna have a significant amount of lost revenues that make the calculations worth it. I don't think we really experienced much at all. Um, Brandy would know that better, but e even um, people's ability to pay their town taxes didn't seem to be compromised. No, um, sorry, sorry. Um, a lot of the fees as far as people coming in to use the vault um, and recording, uh, we just didn't have the flow coming in and out. Um, and it's been brought up as far as our records being electronic and going, um, yeah, putting it out there so that um, they can go onto our website and pull files and, and um, look up stuff and pay, pay by credit card. Mm -hmm. And there are some towns who are looking to use this money to put their records online and accessible, not just because, well, because of the pandemic, of course, but they also recognize that after things settle out for the pandemic, that'll be a useful activity to have it if they can afford to maintain it into the future. So we caution you, if you build something, um, think about its long-term costs and benefits as well. But yes, that was one I think Berlin was looking at. Uh, trying to think of other unique things I've heard. The construction one in, a, in adjusting existing buildings, the online land records, replacement of revenue. Those are the big three we've heard. Um, many communities have not said that right now they're looking at things like PPE. I think because either they already have their stockpile or they're hoping not to need it into the right. future. And they have to store it if they have it. Um, Bonnie, I wonder if you could just um, kind of outline for us the way the town should proceed. And it, we've mentioned, you know, getting uh, res, resident, town residents input on this. Um, what do you kind of broadly see as a, the way forward for, um, you know, like Woodbury to generate ideas and then to, um, you know, submit those ideas for some kind of consultation, I guess. Um, the, how should we proceed? Yeah, I, I would suggest spending three to six months gathering ideas and thinking them through and kind of matching short term, long term, what are our priorities? What are our priorities town wise, but what are our priorities for this money versus other monies in the town? Um, and having that conversation and then thinking um, there's the priority of needs and there's the priorities of, um, what am I thinking of? I always think of a, an X and Y axis. Mm -hmm. you know, here's how much effort it's gonna take to make this happen. And here's how much time or resource I have. What are the easy projects? What are the harder projects? how to stage your projects. So if you decided there are five different activities that would come out of your $92,000, what order do you need to do them in so that they're all done when they need to be done? So if you're passing to CV Fiber, you probably have time to think through what that agreement is and what the town of Woodbury would want out of that agreement. So that when you look at what their draft is, um, their draft is going to tell you what CV Fiber wants and needs. What is it the town needs? And you might spend a couple of months negotiating that back and forth mm -hmm. as they think about not just Woodbury, but the other towns are, who want to pass to them and um, how they can structure that all to get you what they promised. Because you don't want to end up on December 
31st, 2023, suddenly realizing, or 2024, suddenly realizing that the money you gave to CV Fiber isn't going to be spent and you've lost the opportunity to spend it on another community need. So you might, in those kinds of contracts, built in performance measures along the way. All of that, you might take six months before you spend your first dollar. That be deliberate piece and really thinking about how you can best do it. So gather your ideas and that priority and then staging it. What, has, what should happen first? What are my benchmarks that I need to see um, if it's passing to the food shelf? How much time are you giving the food shelf to do whatever you imagine the outcome is? It might simply be increasing their capacity so that they can serve more families for a period of time. Um, and then the vetting of those ideas as you, along the way, we're happy to talk about, you know, um, you've got some ideas, which ones can we, can we reasonably assure you are not eligible? Mm -hmm. Or might be your, the strongest eligibility and present the least amount of risk. So you'll wanna do some sort of risk assessment on each of those. Um, so in that first six months, once you do that risk assessment, you know, how far, I guess I'm writing down that we need to spell out some next steps that would be best practice advice. And I'm trying not to step into G um, VLCT's area as well, um, because I'm pretty sure they're going to coach you on this. I saw Ted Brady just sent something out of, um, about an hour ago that talked about some things. So there'll be some of that kind of advice of next steps coming along. The most critical thing right now is getting as many ideas on the table as you can so you can start sorting through them. Um, the ideas, once you start doing that, ideas will continue to snowball as you look at what other communities are doing or your residents think up new ideas that might not have been there in the first blush of thinking. Kind of ideas grow more ideas. So then spending some time just vetting those ideas again before you spend that first dollar. Unless that first dollar is really clear, we absolutely need, I'm looking at yours, we absolutely need PPE or we're 100% certain we want to do that wastewater study. Um, you, unless you've got that kind of certainty for the future, you're probably going to take three to six months to work through ideas before signing any agreements. Does it make sense to, you know, for this vetting process that we check in with both VLCT and the Regional Planning Commission? Or I know that you mentioned that VLCT will be doing more of the legal kind of side of it, but sounds like it might be good to get two, you know, like getting um, two di diagnoses from different doctors or something um, with the vetting uh, just to make sure. Um, you can do that. They may send you back to us for project things, project okay. development. Um, there are certain legal things I'm always going to send you to VLCT. Okay. We're trying not to duplicate, but we right. are working cooperatively and feeding each other. Like the conversations I have with you guys and some of the questions you had tonight, I'll feed up to them and they'll likely come out with their frequently asked questions as well. Okay, All right. Similar to what the Department of Taxes did last time. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and just so that other folks in town know, I did attend that VLCT webinar and I have a recording of it, which they sent me, which I would be glad to send along to anybody who would, it was about an hour long, maybe a little bit over an hour. Yeah. Um, did, it, yeah. Sorry. No. It is available on their website as well, if you want to save yourself some bandwidth in transferring it. And they are, they're doing the housing for the ARPA information. There's a lot of good information gathered on their website already, as well as some links uh, that we're using as resources. Like I said, as we go back and forth, we're feeding them information and they're feeding us back information. 
so that we can do this one-on-one. -on -one. There might be a point in the future where it makes sense to invite town oh, officials yeah. together to talk about their ideas, either in the county or statewide. Um, those open sessions where you hear what other communities are doing are a great place to generate ideas too. Any, anything else, any other questions for Bonnie? That's good. I guess, thank you very much for meeting with us. It's been pretty helpful. Um, it sounds like we have an idea of how to move forward on this and we'll discuss it more. Um, Skip, do you? Thank you, anything? Bonnie. You're welcome. Okay. No, no questions, Michael. Okay. Not tonight, anyhow. Okay. okay. And I'm happy to come back whenever you have another batch of questions or via email as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you, Bonnie. Th thank yeah. you very much, Bonnie. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's um. Let's do the um. Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department MOUs um, next. Um, so there are there are two MOUs that uh, Chance has sent to us. Um, one is the the annual sort of yearly renewal of the MOU that the town has with the fire department for the services that they provide the town. Um, I think all of you have received that. Um, via the email and also there's been a paper copy down at the town office for a few weeks now. Um, and then the other MOU is a more recent one, an update of the uh, emergency generator that's located at the school. Um, the fire department, the select board um, met and some representatives from the school met with Brookfield services to go over the uh, servicing of the generator after the time that it um, kind of shut down uh, when there was an emergency, um, when the power went out during a snowstorm. Um, so Chance has rewritten that MOU. Um, and um, I don't know, I'm hoping that everybody has had a chance to see that. Um, what I'm what I'm looking for tonight is for the select board to approve um, both of those MOUs. Um, I think that both Chris and I have signed the uh, the MOU with the fire department for their services to the town, um, and I think the other one still remains to be signed. Um, but we should also um, approve it publicly uh, in this select board meeting. Um, is there so this is Chris? This is Chris. Uh, move to approve. Okay, I'll second. All right, any discussion at all? So, which let's do them one at a time just so it's totally clear and official. So, um, Chris, which MOU are you moving to approve? I'm moving to approve the, the original proposal. The original proposal. I'm not clear on what you mean by that. My apologies. Our regular MOU, fire department MOU. MOU. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'll second. All right. Um, any more discussion about that MOU? Any any changes or any questions about the terms of that from any select board members or any anyone else here? This is Chris. I have no no questions. Okay. I have none either. Um, just a procedural question. Can I ask the person who is attending the meeting by phone to identify themselves? I should have done that earlier, but. Phone number ending in 904. Could you identify yourself? You have to press star six in order to speak. Hmm. There we go. Okay. 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 This is Sarah Van Hoff. I didn't have the passcode to join via Zoom, uh, Michael. Okay. Um, I thought I sent that to you, but I'm going to give that to you verbally right now. Um, okay. That'd be the perfect. Pa the passcode is seven five eight 
758-779. Okay, I'll hang okay. up and- Great. Perfect. We just wanna make sure we're not getting Zoom bombed. <laughs> yeah. So we have a motion on the floor. I don't hear any more discussion or- So um, all those in favor of approving the um, memorandum of understanding with the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department for their services to the town um, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, so motion approved. Um, so uh, I'd like to hear a second motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between um, the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department, the town and um, the Woodbury Elementary School or the, the Union School District. We don't have a representative to that, but if um, the select board approves it, um, I will contact the uh, school district um, to get them to sign it. I know the terms that they have agreed to the terms. So do so I hear a motion, motion to approve from Chris? Okay. Do I'll second. A second? Uh, any discussion at all about that MOU? What? I think that Brandy has uh, some paperwork. Okay. That is signed. So I just need um, the chair and the president to come in of the fire department and sign off on it. And then I'll keep a copy and I can scan email anybody a copy. Okay. Now is that for the, which MOU is that for? For the annual funding. That's the services one she's got there. Is okay. The all right. On here? Okay. All right. Um, this one is between, uh, da, 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 da. it's the, it's the, I've only seen one. Yeah, yeah. There's only I think there's only one paper copy. We can we can print out the other, and um, I'll bring it down with me tomorrow. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the memorandum of understanding. Um, you had raised your hand, Chance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once we once we got to the discussion part, I just wanted to clarify with the select board that they were good to go. Uh, I thought I'd covered all the points that we had discussed when we met with Brookfield but I just wanted to verify that. And I think that's why there's no printed copy for Wednesday tonight. Yeah, I, I just found that email um, gotcha. today. I read it. it, it seems, it definitely seems fine to me. Um, it was yeah, pretty much as well. what we discussed. Yeah, okay, so I'm perfect. fine with it. Yeah. yeah, this is Chris. I'm sorry, I don't have any video right now, but I agree that after our discussion out in the field that day with the folks in Brookfield Services, I think we're on the same page, so. Yeah. Perfect. Thank I, you, guys. I think, I think we should move forward. Okay. Any other discussion about the, mo the motion? So, um, so I guess I'd ask for all those that approve the memorandum of understanding uh, between the school district, the town, and the voluntary fire department over the the financing and maintenance of the emergency generator at the school. Um, indicate by saying aye. Chris says aye. 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 Okay. So motion approved. Um, so we're good with those two. I, Chance, if you'd like, I can print that out. I am going to be going down to the town office tomorrow, um, and I can sign it. Uh, we could leave it there uh, for you to sign, or I don't know if Paul is a fire chief. Um, yeah, I'll sign, sign it. I don't problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, once the town folks have signed it, um, we'll get it to the um, to the school board for them to sign. That's fine. Yep, that works. Okay. okay. Good. All right. So um, next on the agenda are the town fuel bids. And I guess what, you know. See you, Chance. Thank you. Thank thanks you, guys. Thanks for coming, Chance. Yep. Good night. Um, so, Brandy, I, I would imagine you. You're the keeper of the bid, so I guess that you and Robin could be the ones opening them because we don't have them. They're finding the bids now, I bet. Yes. <laughs> Where did we put, what shelf did we put those on? That's, um, we only received one. There you yeah. go. That makes it easy. That's what happened last year, right? Have you turned that up, Robin? Yep. 
Woo-wee. You just need an electric guitar and you'll be all set. <laughs> I gotta I gotta grow my hair out, so give me a minute here. Karaoke. <laughs> I you know, I think in the future, having you and Robin in separate rooms would probably help all of that. But Hopefully we'll be doing this live soon. Yeah, that's true. Can we put a grant in for the town hall to have an extra room? I don't think so. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I'll have you turn that down, Robin. All right, this was from who was this from Robin? This doesn't even say who it's from. Oh, this one was from Born. Born. Oh, and there's actually no bid here. It is just saying that they're unable to bid based on this requirement um, because of the market is so up and down right now. Not sure how any company can hold a quote for 30 days. Please let me know if this change, if you change this requirement. So there was no, there was no bid. Okay, so I wonder if what we should do is, um, and this is just me thinking off the top of my head at the moment. Um, I remember last year, I think we only got one bid. Um, it was from Gillespie's and they did actually give us dollar figures. I wonder if we should maybe call, um, we should probably discuss this too, what, how to move forward, but just getting a sense if this is true for all of the fuel companies well, here's um, the problem, Michael. They're, they're no, they don't want to hold the price for us for 30 days. That's the problem. So my recommendation, since we've gone through the bidding process, is that we simply go negotiate with our existing vendor to come to terms on a price. Okay. That's what I would suggest we do, just to cut short of this. We're not going to get around this problem right now. So basically, they're going to say, we'll do it for this much, and we'll agree, and that's that. Mm -hmm. I, this is Chris. I agree with Paul. Um, Ms. Brandy, is there a way that we can just call them and ask for a quote for- And just vote on it the next meeting. And vote on the next okay. meeting. All right. Because I, I understand they're scared. If it goes up a dollar a gallon after we, and they have, they won't commit to these gallons until we we commit so that they, they'll be on the hook. So I, I get the problem, but we've yeah. done our due diligence with the process, so. Yeah. Yep. So, and I, and so I, just, well, I think that it, this is the time for us to just Ask for a quote, short term quote. Okay. So, just for clarity for people taking in this meeting in the future and for the minutes, we're basically right at the moment, we have contracts for all of the town's fuel needs with Gillespie Fuels. So, we'll be contacting them and getting a quote. Um, do we want to do it on a monthly basis or? Um, well, I think they'll do a year for us, Mike. It's just, it's a, uh, they just don't want to commit a bid that's going to last for 30 days before they get a commitment from us. Okay. All right. That's the problem. Well, yeah. That's my, okay. that's my, this is Chris's understanding as well. Um, okay. That, you know, they'll, they'll commit to a term, just not a, not a quote for price. Right. Cause my, my fuel dealers did, they, but they want an answer within two weeks, not 30 days. Okay. All right. Cause okay, we did follow the purchasing process. We just didn't get any bids. Right. Okay. So that, that sounds like the way to move forward. And it sounds like we're in agreement with that. Yep. Um, I don't think we need to really vote on it. Nope, because um, we'll just vote on the price when we get it. Vote on the price right. when we get it. Okay, all right, good. Uh, let's see, I'm wondering if, um, just looking at the time and looking at the agenda, and um, Sarah's here with us, I wonder if we could skip ahead and Chuck, if this is, only if it's okay with you, because you're you've been waiting patiently. Um, no, I'm fine. We, Do whatever okay, you if we address the community library roof now, and sure. then we'll we'll jump back to the town highway report. Because does that sound okay with everybody? I'm good. Okay. So um, <clears throat> good as well. Okay. So let me just kind of bring folks up to speed on the 
on the somewhat sorry state of the community library roof. Um, so we originally had two contractors that expressed uh, that I had contacted that expressed an interest in uh, providing the town with a bid for re uh, repairing the roof. Um, we did get a bid from one of those contractors for uh, way more than we anticipated. Um, and then uh, the other contractor, I haven't really been able to get a response from. Um, and I should, you know, I admit I probably should have been more uh, aggressive in trying to get a hold of them. Um, so I haven't made a few calls and emails. Um, and then we've had this other option that um, Chris was exploring of having um, someone knowledgeable enough in town um, to volunteer to oversee the project and then getting community members to do the work and uh, you know the town, the library um, paying for the materials. Um, so this is Chris and yeah. I have spoken with some community members. Um, I don't think that this is going to be possible this year. Okay. Okay. That's my frank answer. All right. I'm sorry to, I, I wish I had a different answer. Um, mm -hmm. I would like that very much. No. But uh, my answer so far is that I've gotten community members who are engaged and willing to work, but the prices that we can find to actually yeah. get basic materials are so far beyond anything that we can actually afford. Right. I just don't think it's possible. And just the material costs are going to outstretch our budget. Right. Even with only volunteers. Right. That's the reality. Okay. So the so, catch is, the catch is, is that that roof really does need to be repaired this year. Um, There's no question about that. So I'm not really sure how to go about that part. I think um, I make a suggestion. Sure. I'd like to hear from Chuck. Or in uh, Walmart, I'm uh, not Walmart, Lowe's or Home Depot. You can buy stuff by the five gallon pail that you put on with a brush that makes a new rubber roof. And it's relatively expensive. It's a couple hundred bucks a five gallon pail, but probably four pails would fix you up where you could get by for a year. Might be worth looking at. <laughs> it would be worth checking into it. And then you could do it with volunteers. If the roof was dry in a good afternoon, you'd have it all done. Yeah, I, I, I would do that maybe as a last resort, but... Um, You're just you know, about to a last resort. We're almost to last resorts, unless we got yeah, a better idea. Well, I think we're kind of getting closer at last resorts here. Um, the other, the only other option I can think of is, you know, just biting the bullet and paying more than we anticipated. Um, we do have a, a small pot of money in, in a school fund that was left over from the school roof that we could use. Um, I don't know how much more the library trustees would be willing to spend on the project. They've committed $10,000 to it. That was our original estimate. Um, so, um, and I, mean, I so am- Michael, well, might, you, might you mention one of the quotes, please? Well, the one quote that we got was for $34,500. But, um, and that person is willing to look, relook at that bid and, you know, cut it back. He, part of the bid was replacing every sheet of plywood on the roof, um, which I don't think is necessary. And then maybe cutting back on, on the, um, the metal um, components of the roof. Um, you know, I think his was a, a high end uh, extreme, um, you know, this person likes to do things totally by the book and professionally, um, we might be able to cut it back some. Yeah, and but, the problem uh, for him is they, I'm sure they have a warranty issue with the shingle because our bid specified a warranty and to guarantee yeah. the warranty, they need a sound deck. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, but we're also, even with the quote from, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm, <clears throat> I'm in the field, so I'm by a highway. So, <laughs> all right. I mean, obviously, the thirty-four thousand five hundred is way we're too still, much. We're still we're still twenty-eight thousand dollars short of our over budget. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the trustees meet on Thursday, and and we'll talk about you know what how we can increase the budget. But I mean, I understand. I, if I bought plywood myself, so I get it. It's a hundred dollars a sheet or close to that. It but, is. Yeah. I mean, 
typically doesn't a contractor actually have to walk the roof and determine it? He may need to replace two sheets of plywood, not the entire roof. Correct. So no, I agree with you on that. A, yep. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I was just trying to ask around and I don't know if anybody's um, talked to any anybody else. I, I mean, we're going to have that cost of plywood and cost of materials um, issue no matter what, but from 35,000 just seems like a really big jump. I, you know, if they said 20, I'd say, yeah, well, that's the cost of materials right now. But, um, as, you know, there's EF Wall. I know they do a lot of municipal bids and um, I have a contact name there. I don't know the person, Kevin Lord. And then they sometimes subcontract to a place called Burrell Roofing in Williamstown. Is it worth reaching out to some of these other people just individually and say, hey, you know, are you interested in this job? I mean, maybe they didn't read front porch form and see that RFP or I don't know how it goes out, you know, if, if it's right. I if think so, so Michael, is, one other way to bid this would be what's called a time and material job. Mm -hmm. um, we could price out the shingles, the flat rake, whatever it is, buy the materials ourselves and then pay uh, the contractor by the hour to do the job. I think it's still going to be high. You do expose yourself if they find a bunch of rotting plywood. Sure, you are. yeah. So yeah. that's the only other option that I see besides a, 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 a temporary repair, like Chuck suggested, for a mm -hmm. year or so. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the time and material, we could actually go buy the shingles. We can actually go buy whatever we need, and we own the materials, yeah. and then hire someone to install them. Mm -hmm. Because then you avoid the markup. But again, you are exposing yourself to some risk there. Right. Yeah. I mean, because I do tend to agree. I don't think you're going to have to replace the whole deck on that roof. Oh, no, I don't stairs. think so either. Um, I mean, there is there are yeah, parts this, of the roof where the shingles are actually, you know, sticking up in the air. They've kind of cracked and mm -hmm. broken. And, um, and you know, we could slap a bunch of tar there and, and hope that everything works for another year. Um, and maybe that's what we're gonna have to do. Um, either that or just put something over that spot. I, I, I only yeah. saw that on the, on the uh, part that pretty much faces west and south um, of the roof. The other parts of the roof, you know, the north east, east facing sides are, are not as badly um, decomposed, I'll call it. Um, so we, we could do, try to do a temporary fix that way. Um, um, this, is, this is Chris, I'm sorry. But uh, I think that people need to come and take a look at the roof. This, this person who sent us the bid did come and look at the roof. Is that okay? Yeah, he but did come and look at the I roof. I think that uh, if he's not doing time, this blindly. If you spend but some it, time up there, it, uh, it's not in great shape. Right. I agree. So he, I think that uh, he, we're gonna he, we're gonna be into a little bit more than we're we're quoting once we get into it, mm -hmm. which um, I'm I'm concerned about. Yeah. Right. So this, go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. This, uh, this stuff that I'm talking about that you buy by five gallon pail is not anything like roof and tie. Uh huh. This, this is a rubber roof sealer. They use it all over the South. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that it would be good for up here for a long period of time, but it would be a quick, easy, fit, relatively cheap fix for a year. Okay. That, that would be our safest, which I hate to do, but I just, anything else is exposing us to some big financial risk. Yes, right. it is. Well, um, so here's my thought on how to move forward on this. Why don't... Um, uh, let's make some phone calls to some contractors um, and see where we get. I, you know, I'm not feeling very confident about that, but right. it seems to be um, a way, you know, at least to, to make a, a second attempt. Um, and Sarah, you know, I'll, um, I'm glad to help uh, make some calls. I have some names um, that I was given before. Um, you know, we can call, we can contact EF Wall. Um, they're probably booked right out, but um, probably maybe, yeah. But maybe not. Um, and just go that route, see what we got for um, bids. It obviously the materials are going to affect the cost. Um, 
And maybe if the trustees could get a sense of how much more they would be willing to spend. Um, I mean, we should probably, you know, have a cutoff limit, like maybe 15 or $20,000 and anything beyond that, forget it. We'll, um, we'll go with the, um, the, the plan that uh, Chuck is proposing um, and just patch those parts of the roof that, that really look um, horrible. Um, and, 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 hope, and hope that the cost of materials is a little bit better next year, although it's hard eventually. to say will it ever I, come I, down I, or not. It's <laughs> gonna have to, because I think it's actually killing a lot of projects at this point. So it is. Yeah. It, it'll, a lot it'll of them have are. to, they'll push a reset. Yeah, I agree, I agree with everybody. I think that uh, if, we can, if we can find a way to triage for one year, uh -huh. our prices are gonna drop. You're going to have yeah. to. My, I've worked in construction for over 30 years and the prices never stay up that long, but we're right. just in a bad spot right now. Yeah. And Do I think they'll go back down to two years ago level? Probably not. But Probably not. You're right. No, they're never going to go all the way back down, but we're in, okay. we'll be in a better spot than we are right now. Like shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just, just um, for the, you know, the kind of futile, attempt we'll, I, we'll, we'll we will make some calls um and, and uh i think and, i'll and chris will reach out again to all the volunteers that he got in touch with in town and see because i talked to people who were intimate with the building of the of the entire structure uh-huh so i'll just talk with them one more time and see whether or not we could mitigate costs but okay. quite honestly, I don't think there's a mechanism. Right, okay. Apology. Well, let, let's kind of proceed, you know, thinking that that won't happen, but if it does, that's great. Um, and then I think I might go down there with a ladder and actually get up on the roof and see how much of it, I mean, I can see from the ground, the parts that look pretty horrible, but um, take a closer look and just see how much of that roof um, We'll Michael, if you could tell me that day, I'll try to be there at the same time. Okay. Um, yeah, me as about, well. I got, I got ladders close by there. Okay, how about this Friday? Good for Chris. Uh, good okay. for me. All right, so let's, um, what time? It's supposed to be nice weather. 2, 2 p.m. Two. Okay. Put it Ball. in my calendar. Let me just double check here before I, this is the 18th. Yeah, 2 p.m. works. All right, so we'll we'll do a, a close look at that roof um, this Friday, and I'll I'll make some phone calls. I have some open time tomorrow. I'll make some phone calls and. Um, Thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank and you. We, all right. Okay. All right, and I'll let you know what the board says on Thursday about, you know, a, a money cap. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. This is Chris. Okay, thank, thank you, Sarah. And and, you. A, and maybe the town, you know, we can discuss too. There there might be a little bit of money that we can find somewhere too towards this. Um, so they'll, but we'll discuss that when if we actually have a bid. Okay. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, Chuck. We are ready for the town highway report. Well, the boy's been doing pretty well there. We've got the grant finished up on the Valley mm -hmm. Lake Road, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we put the culverts in across Ronnie's driveway and put a sediment pond in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks good. I was down there. That does. It looks good. Yeah. But thanks. And uh, we've been up on the end of King Pond Road for Paul bets and cleaned his field up and hydro seeded it and ditched mm -hmm. the other side on the uh, Gallison side of the road. Yeah. Uh, we ended up putting a culvert in there for them to be able to get into the field in good shape because mm -hmm. with the ditch there was no way into it. So yeah. we put a 15 inch culvert in there. Um, they're going to start mowing roadsides tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, we'll see tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> Be good to chop down all that wild chervil that's getting ready to go to seed. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, the chipper is going to be following them right around. So okay, um, All right. we're going to try to clean it up as fast as it falls. So All right. well, almost as fast. Almost as, as fast. Okay. Um, we changed the uh oh, Chuck froze. Bottom of East. Yeah. Whoops. We're we're losing you a little bit, Chuck. Now you're back. Uh, I heard bottom of East Hill. Yeah, uh, we cleaned out all the sand up down there and took some sand out of the road. Mm -hmm. They kept cutting the corner and, and making it so rough there we couldn't keep it home. So we put a block in and a post in and we got them so they got to stay down this way, eight feet away from the stop sign. Okay, or so crash into the block. What's that? Or crash into the block. One or the other. Uh, <laughs> As big as that block is, I bet they'll only do it once. Right. It's good behavioral uh, modification yep. there. Yep. I yeah. saw it. Looks, looks good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to clean it up a little more. And I wanted to see if it was going to amount to anything before we put a lot of time into it. But, mm -hmm. um, and a week ago, Saturday, I went up with my excavator and fixed under the high drive or straightened it out quite a lot. Yeah. And um, I want to go back once more. Um, I talked to the guy that has bought the farm and he's not real impressed with the idea of blacktopping under the hydro. Okay. Yeah. So I talked to him and he's going to look into maybe having some uh, gutters put on it so that we don't get that. Those the ridges. ice filled up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the ice build up. And um, I think if we get it shaped up and we can get the water to stop doing that and the ice build up, I think we'd probably be all right anyway. Okay. Um, I, you know, he said him and his wife would talk it over, but they didn't really feel comfortable. They didn't really care about the idea of having the black top. And I said, well, if we yeah. can make it work, if we can work together and make it work, then it's fine with me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I guess that's where we're at there. Okay. Would crushed ledge there kind of give a good solid mat for the road? It's got some crushed ledge in it now. See the bottom. Uh, when Greg dug it down, he's right down to the ledge. Right under there, so that the yeah. truck's got. Um, <coughs> excuse me, clearance enough to get through. Mm -hmm. And I really don't want to build it up too much. Right. Um, which the ledge is fine. It won't, mm -hmm. that's not going to go anywhere or, or no, anything. It's just a matter of getting it all shaped up, you know. And I helped it a lot this time. I got rid of the, the hump over the culvert and mm -hmm. it's not too bad, but it needs a little more work. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to take my excavator up again and do it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, unless somebody's got an objection to that. I don't. Okay. No. It, so, it, I drove I drove through it the other day and it is much better than it was. Yeah. 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 But like I say, there's a couple the lower side of it needs uh to be dropped. Mm -hmm. The 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 under the high drive was the lowest point. So all the water that come off that roof mm -hmm. and everywhere else laid there. Yeah. And I've got it pulled down some, but I need it needs to be pulled down some more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I think we'll get it straightened out where it's everybody would be happy. Mm -hmm. um, so Chuck, when you're when you're doing this work on your own with your excavator, um, it feels like the town should be paying you to do that. Well, if I was doing much, I would, but it was, I was only up there like an hour and a half. You know, uh -huh. I don't mind doing it a little bit, but. Well, uh, thank you for that. I mean, you, you've yeah, got to get, you, you've got to haul the excavator there on a trailer and un unload it. I mean, it's, but there is time there. It'll, it'll work out. No, All right. We'll be fine. Okay. I mean, it, it's not going to happen real often. I mean, 
I did I did it this time because I was sick of driving through there myself and I just... I understand. Yeah. Well, much appreciated. The stress much Greg appreciated. Was having one of his moments and it didn't seem to be working out the way I wanted it to, so I went and done it myself. Did it yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um I talked to Paul Council. I guess they've got the money from the town mm -hmm. Woodbury Fund or something. Yeah, the Woodbury Fund has sent a check to the town for that project. Yeah. The parking area for yeah. the town forest. Yeah. So we met with Paul last Tuesday, I think it was. Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, I don't know. First of the week, anyway. And we got it figured out. We got a plan pretty well lined up for that to get going. So. Okay. Um, which if we have good luck, it'll be coming right along here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I guess the bush brush cutting is going to be the big thing for the next couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. And that's bound to stir somebody up. Yeah. I'm afraid well, it's going to stir a lot of people up, but like I say, I, Told them to take a chainsaw with them and anything that's real ugly that they leave sticking out to cut it off. And they're going to take a chipper and chip everything up, mm -hmm. make sure the roads are all cleaned up. So, okay. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Right. Well, Gotta I know that'll make one person in town happy. So, probably not. Even mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> well, no, not even close. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, anything else, Chuck? Um, I don't think so. Okay. So, um, we did get that second um, uh, municipal highway grant for working on the resurfacing the Cabot Road. The catch really? with that, the catch with that is, is that we really can't start the work until uh, after the first of July. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, because we couldn't yeah. get. Here anyway. Okay, yeah. They, they don't want us doing any work on it until the beginning of the new fiscal year. Um, yeah, no problem. So, um, no problem. We'll, I'll probably have Greg hone it one more time, but uh, yeah, Grizzly hone it one mm -hmm. more time because it's the hill's getting pretty rough again. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'll be after the first of July before we get there to do anything, right? And if, if there is any other, um, sections of road that that you'd like to work on like taking care of the berms and you know <clears throat> crowns etc um there is the possibility of um a um, municipal general roads permit uh, grants and aid grant um what we would need to do um is know get a sense of what other sections of road in town you want to work on and i know you guys are already have a long list and and we don't have to do this this year. Um, but if there are some sections of road that you know that you want to have worked on, um, and if they're hydrologically connected, and I could check that out, um, then there is the possibility of having some grant money help the town pay for that work. Okay. The one that the one that I want to do the worst is from the end of the blacktop by your house to Gary Ewan's. We've done all of Foster Hill. Okay. Last fall, all of all of the hill, but that road from the, from the pavement, on, pavement on, okay. yeah, to King Pond needs to be done. Need, needs to be ditched both sides. Okay. And we I, do I, have I, on the list of things to do this year. Okay, I can check. I I don't think that any of that is hydrologically connected, but I'll so either, but yeah, I'll I'll check. I can check that and see. Okay. This and is, this uh, is Chris. I looked at it briefly, and Michael, I don't think it's any hydrologically connected. Okay, that would be that would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. But yeah, that's a that one there really needs to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Over in Winston Moore's Hill, that could stand some attention over there too. And that's that's the hill above Paul Betts's place. That steep drop. No, Valley Lake Road. Valley no, Lake Road. Valley Lake yeah. Going going down, yeah. yeah that 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 That's is sending stretch on Valley Lake. That that is hydrologically connected. Yeah. Yeah. So we could put in for one for there. Um, okay. 
they'd done that not too long ago. That corner where Harry uh, ditched that corner and put the, the juke mat in on it and stuff, that needs to be drawn off and cut back there. Yeah. That, that, whole, that whole stretch is kind of a mess, right? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. And uh, yeah, if we could get it, some money to do something there, I would be all for that. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure that we could. Um, also, that, that brings up the, I did speak with uh, Shauna Clifford, um, and yeah. they could, they're they willing to come pretty much any time, um, you know, to look at this, that alternate route that we were going to. The realignment of Valley Lake Road. Yeah. yeah. I think we should be working on that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that that would be a smart thing for us to be focused on. Okay. Because if we so, can get it where we want it, we can get it uh, uh, surveyed and then we can go through the laying out process and we have all agreeing green parties there. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So if, you know, if we came up with some tentative dates that we could meet, um, Shauna and, you know, one of the VTRANS um, engineers would probably come and meet with us and just hear what we're thinking and offer some suggestions. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess whenever the three of you can meet, just just pick a date, Michael, that's good for you and Shauna, and I'll do the best thing. I'm 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 uh, my schedule's more open unless they call me into work now because I'm working. Okay, I get called in. So all right, this is so, Chris. I'll do the I'll do the same darn thing that Paul's doing. Yeah, okay, date, I should be able to make it, but if I happen to get called out, I might not. But I'll okay. make every so, other. So so for me, um, you know, at, at this point in my in my life, I have Tuesdays and Fridays that are. Those are good days. Open. Those are good days where I can Monday schedule me, something like work. that. Okay, so I'll I'll get back in touch with Shauna, um, give her some dates, and we'll try to do it. Um, uh, well, if maybe before June ends. Um, yeah, just I, pick it out, and because we can get rolling on it, get, and then if she lays it out, and the home, homeowner's landowner likes it, we can work on the laying out process. Yeah. No. This okay. Friday is not good for me, but any other Friday. Okay, that, that helps. Um, yeah, and um, next Tuesday isn't good I for would me. Like to be Actually, next week, Tuesday and Friday are not good for me. I'm yeah, just thinking just, ahead. It's the week here. after, go for it. Yeah, so as soon as we'll get there, but as soon as we can. Um, yeah. So I think we're kind of creeping into July. So um, it happens we'll fast. See. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll get past the 4th of July and then try to do it sometime, maybe that week after the 4th. I think the 4th is on a Sunday this year. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, the, the 5th, may, 5th may be a, a public or state holiday. Um, oh, no so, doubt. Yeah, so maybe yeah, this yeah, that would be Monday the, Monday the 5th would be. Yeah, yeah. So maybe the 6th or the Friday of that week. Um, that's what I'll shoot for. Okay. Please. That sounds good. To, sounds good to Chris. Okay. All right. Um, so I had a couple things with the town highway report that we could move on to. If there's, is there anything else? Um, the, oh, the other, that just, while it's in my head, um, I is kind of, I'm kind of assuming that the, um, design work for that box culvert would also be something that would um happen after the first of july so um i'm going to uh, when i go down to the town office tomorrow one of my things on the list is to get some um advice from brandy on putting together the rfp for that um, i did speak to shauna about it and she mentioned that um we could put it i guess to do due diligence we will put it out for a public bid but she also suggested that um, I send it to a couple of um, civil engineers that pretty much do a lot of that work. One of them is the Ruggles, uh, the fellow that we worked with um, earlier. And then um, the other um, person, um, I'm blanking on his name, but he designed the box culvert that's down um, next to um, Nelson Pond. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, so that's kind of on the list to get that put together and, and get it out um, um, so that we'll have uh, some bids to look at uh, sometime in July. And it's pretty straightforward. They, VTRANS has told us what we need to do. 
they are willing to do the hydraulic study for that area um, with their own um, crew. So that wouldn't cost the town anything, um, but the rest of the design work would, would, there definitely is a cost. I'm not sure what it is. We'll find out when we get the bids. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there's no materials except for computers and paper. Um, yeah. So, um, so the, the two other things that I've tagged with the Town Highway Report are um, the Swanson Quarry Gravel and the third full-time road crew member. Um, yeah, I, so this, is, this is Chris. May I yeah. comment on the uh, Swanson Quarry Gravel? Sure. All right. Um, so we do have a bid from J.A. McDonald. Mm -hmm. um, but that bid requires us to purchase quite a bit of stone for an extended period of what would be an expended period of time. And maybe Chuck can comment on this, but we're looking for quite a bit of different types of stone. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about quite a bit of money. And when we initially sort of got this quote, we were thinking that this would be sort of a five to seven year period of time that we had had stone available. Mm -hmm. And that stone be stored at Swenson, which mm -hmm. sounds pretty good. However, um, with the amount of money that we're talking about, I think that it has to go, after talking with, uh, with Brandy, it has to go to a, a vote, a town vote, um, because of the amount of money that we're talking about. I think that would be the best route to go. It is a big chunk of money. Um, right, because if we can borrow for five years is what we can borrow any amount as long as it's paid off in five years, but that's a lot of, a lot of big payment. Yep. yep. It's, it's quite significant. So, so if we're going to exceed that five years, we'd have to go to the voters. It boaters. seems like we, <laughs> I, <laughs> I hate to say it, but um, do we have to put this out for a bid? Uh, well, this could be considered sole source because their crusher is up there. I was going to say, yeah, Swinson may not let anybody else in there. Right. All right. There so, uh, Miss Smith. Do we have to put this out for a bid? Brandy, you're muted. The town does have a purchasing policy. Um, okay. And it, we have the policies in place so that um, it, there's not an automatic vote for spending money without town approval. So it sounds like uh, as much as this is a great thing for us, it won't work without a bid. Um, well, we have, let's say with the, the bid from McDonald, um, we have a, we have an estimate of what it would cost. I mean, my understanding is, is that the stone is free. It's the crushing costs that we're looking at. Um, and we have an that's estimate. It. That's correct. Okay. So that's we correct. have an estimate that we can work with. Um, for we have an we estimate for the crushing costs. The stone is free. And I'll, I'll lean on Chuck for this for a moment, but we also have, you know, five to seven years worth of storage also for free. All right. Um, yeah. So very accessible. I don't even know how to put that in numbers, but when I ran the numbers based on what I, I had from Ms. Smith, um, we're really getting a pretty good deal here. Well, Yes, I agree. But what we need to do, especially if we're going to bring this before the town, is that we, like I discussed before at our previous meeting, we have to make a good case before the town. For so I have all the numbers. And um, Brandy, how is the best yeah. way that I put that before the town? Yep, I'm here. Yep. So what's the best way to, to give that to the town? Do we need to? The first thing to do would be to discuss it at a select board meeting. Well, I wanted, I wanted to clear up one thing about our okay. borrowing ability. I'm just reading from the statute right here. Um, 20, uh, 19 VSA 
417 says that we can borrow for the purchase of tools, materials, and equipment necessary for the construction, maintenance, repair of highways for a term of five years. So one, if we wanted to borrow what we could afford to pay back in five years, we could do that. And I just don't know if that's if, if our buying power is adequate with what our current budget is. That's the issue. Yeah, that's that's these are all things that we need to consider and, and discuss um, with the with, let's say usually we've done our loans with the union bank and because like we do it to buy a dump truck. We don't we spend two hundred and forty thousand dollars. We don't go, go to the voters. Right. Yeah. So we, we can if with a five year loan the select board can make that decision with a, a loan that's longer than that longer right. term then the town needs to approve it um personally i you know with this expenditure um i would like to have town approval regardless of the number and of that's years. probably wise yeah um this, this so, is best and now that i understand a little bit better i agree that having town approval is really really important for this right. so there might be three people hanging from a tree somewhere. If, uh, <laughs> Maybe they'll fire me. We could be so lucky. <laughs> um, well, I, I, you got out of here, Paul. You got out of here. So, and I, th I think it's just good policy to, to, to really come up with a, a sound argument. I mean, we basically, if I think we all agree that this is a good deal. Are we going to miss the boat, though? Is What's the term they're going to have their crusher up there? Uh, so I can explain the numbers that uh, that I put together, I think very readily, and I'll provide those to the rest of the select board, which could be provided to the town. Is that reasonable? Yeah, what we can do, let's plan on having this as part of the agenda at our next meeting. We'll actually have a special be, town meeting. Or, uh, yeah, um, and we can hold a special town meeting to make this decision if we feel that you know, you know, if it, if time is of the essence, which it sounds like it is. Um, I mean, Chris, do you have any idea how long the crusher is going to be up there? It's uh, it, well, so we have a relatively. Chuck can speak to this better than I can, but Chuck is going to talk to Chris Davison soon, I think, and the crusher is already in place, or is about to be, but we only have a few months to make this choice. Oh. That's what if we if we voted for the, if made a decision on having a special meeting, then it puts it thirty days out. Um, we'd have, we could hold that meeting within the thirty days, and then we could have an answer. Again, we'd have to after the meeting, we got to wait thirty more days, so that puts us at the end of August. I'm I'm concerned about the time frame, but yeah, me too. Possible. So our other option yeah. is to figure out what we're comfortable borrowing without voter approval. Hmm. Can I say something, Ian? No, please. You know. If we're borrowing money and you can borrow money up to for up to five years to pay for something, and we're figuring uh, that we're going to have stone for five to seven years, I would really hate to think about borrowing money for ten years to pay for like seven thousand. Uh, I mean, uh, for stone running up to those seven years, because that's sort of like feeding a dead horse. Mm -hmm. Right. Once you've used all that up all that stone up and we still got three years of pain on it our roads are going to go to hell here well uh, so that that's it i mean we need to do some more thinking and discussing of this to see if this is really what we want to do i you know um i think it's a good idea but i don't think you ought to be borrowing money for longer than you think that the stone's going to last right right that's what i'm saying because yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm okay myself with borrowing money that, that we can pay back in five years with a comfortable payment. Right. Yeah. I think Brandy has a point, but Chris has a point oh. too. Brandy. Brandy has a question too. Um, go ahead, Brandy. So currently we, we spend 35000 a year on stone and gravel yeah. combined. And that doesn't factor in our trucking, payroll, all that good stuff. Now, if we eliminate or use the stone and gravel budget of that 35,000, does that mean we're not gonna need stone come springtime on certain roads? Like we can't replace, are you wanting to just eliminate those two and that's what we're gonna be using? Uh, my yeah. guess is that we'll pro, yes, Chuck? Okay. Yes. All right. We can use some of it. If that stone's sitting on the hill, why would we go to somebody else and, and pay a premium to have them open their pit? Right. We've got it right here on hand. 
right? Okay. We'd still have to have a budget for gravel because it's not replacing our gravel. Well, will um, because it's going to be uh, one uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, oh, you're saying it could replace all of that budget? It's going to replace all that stuff. That's the that's. The, oh, okay. So well, we could. What, I that's apologize. what Chris and I are working towards. Is is re actually in a sense, doing away with the gravel budget, which would be your yearly payment towards. So we could spend up to 35,000 a year. Yeah, and. Ish, ish. Yeah, 35,000 a year right now is not enough to maintain the roads we've got where they're, they're right. wore out, we're falling behind. So, you know. Right, if, and so now what we're talking about is having a ready source right down the road of all the materials that we need. It's hard to actually put the numbers on that, but I'm trying. It is. Uh, so Ms. Brand, Smith? Brandy has another question. Go ahead, Brandy. So oh, can any of this be written off as part of a uh, as a part of grants resurfacing? Well, I mean the Cabot Road that we're going to be resurfacing this year is um, the materials will be paid for with a grant. Um, but we shouldn't count on we shouldn't count on that. Um, and it's hard. It's hard. That would be you know with a grant they like to see the invoices. So you know when there's an audit we can say oh well we had it all crushed back in 2020 and it was sitting up on the hill and it's probably worth this much money. Um, so that's the tricky thing with grants. Well, would it be possible for Brandy to figure out what we could borrow with a thirty thousand dollar a year payment? for five years to have at our next meeting as part of our conversation about the what to do. Yeah, um, let's try to... Um, hey, this is Chris. Go ahead. Um, I'm really sorry to keep interjecting, but... No, no, that's part of what yeah, we, we need do. Really, we, have, we have a really short window. Yes. To actually make this choice. Um, the crusher will be gone by fall. Okay. So I don't so think we have time to have a town vote. We don't have a ton of time. Because that um, would get I us to the end of August. Time we have to do. have a discussion about this. I don't think that we have time to make a $238,000 discussion about, or $238,000 discussion about this. But um, if we can put some numbers together, then at least we can talk to Jay and McDonald about whether or not this is possible right. but it would be well, kind of a crime for us to not take advantage of the stone for free i understand that but what we need to do if we're going to do this if we're going to take out this large of a loan a five-year loan and we're going to do this we need to have figures and we need to have a very convincing argument for when people wonder what the heck are you guys doing and thinking we need to have our balls, our ducks in a row um, and have a, a very convincing argument for why we thought this was a good deal for the town because we're gonna have a lot of people that are not gonna be very pleased with what we've done, um, especially. Um, so I think what we need to do and at the next select board meeting and just in the interim is start putting um, together an argument um, with figures, you know, good concrete argument about why this is a good deal. We, you know, we talked about the, the trucking costs, um, you know, how much is a truck, if it takes an hour for a truck to go over to Bigford's quarry, there's, there's an hourly rate that the state uses for the use of a truck. So we'll, we'll incorporate that, we'll incorporate the fuel so we can come up with a figure for uh, a trip for a 14 yard load of stone or gravel. Um, there's that cost. Um, there's when, you the cost get the, when you get the hourly rate for the truck, that will include fuel. Okay, all right. So this, that straight hourly rate. And I have those rates, um, you know, I have them on my computer. There's a, the VTrans puts out uh, right. every year or two, they'll put out those rates. That's what I use for the grants. Um, for we'll, the we'll also need what the borrowing costs would be and what we could yes. borrow. I did, just doing a quick calculation here on the calculator I found we, for a $31,000 a year payment for five years at 2% interest, which is what about we doing, we could borrow about $150,000. Yeah. 
So we can get an estimate from the Union Bank um, on what so that gives you a kind of a ballpark you're in. So we right you were kind of looking at you'd reduce the amount of stone you could get uh, to stay within your borrowing window. So so the the thought is, um, Paul, um, to stay within the present uh, gravel and stone budget that we have as far That's as what a, it for, sounded like yeah. for yearly payment. Well, and I think you could. Can I hear from? Can, I, can we hear from Chuck, please? With that, no, go ahead. I think that uh, uh, you should negotiate a new gravel budget for next year before you decide how much money you're going to borrow. Because we we bumped it up to thirty five thousand this year, and you really should bump it up again because we're falling behind all the time. Yeah, so I think Chuck's points well taken. We're probably going to have to bump our expenditure up. I, I'm just trying to pick a number because yeah, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. I agree with Chuck. I, I don't think we can take all of the gravel money and spend it on the stone. That's why I was I was trying to keep that number around thirty thousand um, dollars because if you look at that, it lets us borrow about one hundred and fifty. Just I'm just giving us some numbers to work with. Right. I don't know how many yards of crushed stone that makes. That so that stone up there that we're going to be getting up to up here off the quarry should be the stone and the finish coat, you know, for resurface mm -hmm. stuff. Because that's, gonna... the, that's the idea. This is Chris. That's the idea that we would have both. Right. So you're suggesting borrowing a little more. And spending a little less everywhere else and using that stuff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So but, I think I guess let's bring these numbers to our next meeting and beat this up because we I tend to agree with Chris. We got it just a short way. We got to figure it out. But I also agree with Mike. We want to make sure he laid it out so when someone asks. Um, yeah, we but, we need to, we need to be to to make to be able to make a very convincing argument that this is a good deal for the town. So uh, this but, is Chris. I'm sorry. I've I've tried to put as many numbers together as I can, but I guess I I need some help. So. Um, if you I'll take as many numbers as I can and I'll try to put numbers together. Well, so let's just uh, think of what we need for what we need to consider. Let's um we so can do Chuck, that. I have to talk to you. I gotta talk about numbers. And Brandy, I've got gravel numbers per year, but that's all I've got so far. So I I guess I need to try to estimate statistically. What the costs are so that i can actually put together a, a spreadsheet because otherwise i i guess i'm short so help. why don't you why don't you put together a list chris of everything that the town should consider and that could be the trucking um how many years the the amount of aggregate that gets produced from the crushing will last the town etc you know share that with brandy and chuck they can share it with Paul and I, and, and that way we can kind of get around, you know, a little bit the open meeting rules so that we can discuss this or, at least, you know, Paul and I can offer suggestions to Chuck or Brandy or both um, based on what you're coming up with. And then if we have other thoughts, we can share that through them so that um, when we meet next time, hopefully we pretty much covered everything that that we think we need to consider in in the um, in the case in the argument that we have for um, making this commitment. Um, and okay. uh, and we'll be meeting. Okay. I'm pretty sure we'll be meeting in person. Um, and so we could have um, you know some figures to to everybody could be looking at. Um, it would be warned. So if there were, were people with concerns, they would have the opportunity to come um, and, you know, we could have a, and we'll devote a, a good chunk of our mm -hmm. uh, agenda to this so that we could have a, a, a as long a discussion as it might take. Um, Thank you, Michael. That sound, that sound good for, to move forward on this? I, I think that's a good say one more thing. Yes. Uh, if you're, I know, that you need to explain it very well to the people and we want everybody on the same page and on our side and everything but if you're basically eliminating your gravel budget which 
that's going to help the case. That's going to help the case. Yes. Yeah. We're not actually saving, spending more money. And if you're saving $3 a yard on stone by putting this up, boy, I'll tell you what, it seems like a home run to me. It does. Well, that's that's what we, we need to have those arguments, those those points. Okay. Um, um, I guess this is Chris. On paper I'm and presentable. The last time. So yep. uh, I'll, I'll do better the next time. Yep. Yeah, you're doing okay. More information. Yeah. You're Thanks. doing fine. I mean, we just, we just are all afraid of getting shot, but I'm not that afraid of getting shot. I've stuck my neck out before and probably will again. So, well, <laughs> I, I, I think it would be really a crime for our town. To I not agree. Take advantage of a whole bunch of free aggregate. I agree. So, um, I, I think we, we just need to make a case that's a yes, no sir. brainer. I understand. That's what, we, and, and we I need to it. have. But just make sure we have the borrowing costs available next time, too, so that we have that as part of our equation. Yep, that's that's easy. We can there's some calculators I can use that give us a pretty good idea, but you know. Yeah. The union hey. bank can give us um give Chuck? us those figures. Chuck. Yeah. Can can we can we chat about this for a moment just over like offline at some point? Sure. Yeah. All right. uh, I, uh, most any time. All right. So maybe I can get you at the shop or something like that. Miss Brandy. Um, can I get some other numbers from you and just compare them with the stuff that Chuck has and I'll do my best. Yeah, I'll yeah. get in touch at Union Bank. Yep. Thanks, Miss Brandy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Give me, All give right. me so a call and you're done, Chris. Okay. So let's let's Thanks, move Chuck. on. Is that okay with everybody? I'm good. We okay. killed it. All right. Yeah. So um the third full time road crew member, basically we're gonna um I, I made those adjustments to the um, job description. I think I sent them out. They were. Yeah, I looked at them. Yeah. Did, did that all seem okay? The the text. Yeah, it, it does. I just want to make sure that uh, the it's clear that if someone's a level one, that the computer skills are still an expectation. They got to learn it. So however we yeah. Okay. It talks about the level two. What that only being a requirement. Well, in in the general description, uh, computer skills are also mentioned. Okay. Perfect. So, perfect. So yeah, uh, I, I agree with Paul. Okay, I'll re I'll relook at that and make sure that that's clear. But, but once that's addressed, can, I can just send it out. Okay. Yeah, I, right. I agree. Can can those be highlighted in some way? Uh, or at least moved up on the list? Well, um, I could put it in bold, I guess, or something like that. And, and that we also, like, Chris, in part of our interview process, can make make uh, that part of that process too. Yeah. Enough, yeah. Paul. And, I mean, we do want them to be able to drive a truck and stuff too. Yeah, so. that'd be handy. <laughs> well, if they can, they run their iPad really good, Chuck. Is that good it's for you? Kind of a problem. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> so, so um, I will. Um, I'll put, put. That's you know, pretty much a done deal. Um, that's on my list for my town office visit tomorrow. Um, okay, we'll, we'll get that out. Okay, so. So then you're going to post a job. Yes. Okay. And we'll, you know, we discussed this before, but we'll post it in just the general local newspapers. Uh, we'll put it on the VLCT job posting. Front porch um, forum. Front porch forum. Um, and then VLCT may have some other ideas of places to post it, but um, any any okay. place that, that we can, we'll post it. Um, okay. Um, Dog's so, trying to take your seat, Tegan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the town hall, but it's already late. Um, let's postpone that if everybody- Do it for the okay next one. We're get, yeah, because we're gonna turn into a pumpkin soon. Yeah, um, so it sounds like we're ready to no longer meet via Zoom. I am, I mean, the guidance is gone. All the requirements the are gone. gone. I, I do think the town hall is a better place to meet because mm -hmm. of the room. It's just that office is really tight. Yeah. The only um, key is if somebody could bring the warrants and things to sign it was it was handy to have those there mm -hmm. i could perhaps pick them up um on my way home from work and then bring them to the town hall when i um when i get there to set up for the meeting um, this is chris i'm happy to pick up warrants and things from the town hall okay all right um and then um 
I'll talk with Leaf. Uh, we'll probably set up the meetings as we did before, or as mm -hmm. we did last summer, so that we'll still have the phone in option. There may be people that don't feel comfortable meeting publicly, even though the restrictions have been list, listed, um, lifted. So um, we'll talk to Leaf about, you know, having the live meetings as we did before, um, and with a phone in option. Um, does that sound like the best way to to start? Okay, all right. It's Chris. Um, Chris says yes. Okay. And then, you know, as it gets colder, um, there is the option of the community room at the library. Right. Which we also use. Because um, even if you look at money from this ARPA thing, it'll be, might be a year or two before you get there, so. Right, yeah. And whether we actually are gonna get, you know, uh, uh, slapped on the wrist for spending the money. Uh, yeah, that makes me really, problem. all of that money makes me really nervous. Cause it's like, wait, we want you to spend it first and then we'll tell you if it's okay. Yeah. That just, that really does not sit it's well. A very, it's a very awkward approach, isn't it? Yeah. Well, welcome yeah. to federal government. Again, my experience with this kind of money is really bad. Having gotten it through the fire department before they, the state sucks up so much of it and they put so many requirements on you. It's next to impossible to actually get it. Yeah. I think Miss Robin has a point. She has a question, actually. I, it's a question, yes. How will that, if we're meeting in person in the town hall, how will that work with having the town office open? Do we that delay a, opening, or how do how am I going to do that? How do we do it before, Mike? Uh, I think, um, well, Diana was there, and Laura Daly was there. Um, Brandy was there. Yeah, um, must, be, must be she shut the office while she was down there. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, yeah, that's a good question, Robin. Because um, it would be hard for you to participate being at the town office. Um, there, one thing that, well, uh, we could explore is um, what's called a hybrid meeting where there is the option to zoom, but um, there have been towns that have been it's fairly really challenging. It's challenging. Yeah. yeah. And, and Leaf has suggested that we not do that. Hardwick. Yeah, I, I would also. Yeah. Um, so what would, is there a chance that let's say I went up there from six to six fifteen, and then came down here and opened the office. That might work if we just put Robin on first. That's what we did last summer. Actually, yeah. the town. Yeah. That's yeah, clerk Diana and the town treasurer were, were very, office. very first. Yeah. Okay. This is Chris. I agree. For yeah. the rare meetings that I got to join, we right. had a brief moment with the town clerk, and the rest of the time was remote from yeah. that. I think we're, yeah, we were all done meeting at the town hall by, time, by the time that uh, town meeting came to. Yeah, to we quit like last November again. Yeah. When, it, yeah. when COVID got bad. Um, the other option, Robin, and, and I probably we shouldn't do this, is that you could change the time that the evening, you know, the town office is open. But what right. I think it, that's what we did last summer. We had the town yeah. clerk and the town treasurer first thing, um, and then you were able to, to leave. Uh, get, yep. get down to the town office. And I think oh, Diana probably did post, you I know, was that say those two Monday nights I can just post that it will be open at six fifteen. Right. Or six, six yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we'll get you get we'll you probably in start our meeting and they'll be on by five after or earlier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So just practice talking fast, Rob. We'll be fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's we'll talk fast quick. forward you. <laughs> um so um anything else? I think so. That's that's our plan. Sounds like we have a plan. Um I'll check in with Leaf about it and um and that's the way we'll we'll warn the meeting. Um, uh, let's see. We're up to other business and personnel policy. Yeah, um, just a quick update on the personnel policy. Um, that's going to go to VLCT tomorrow. It, it con converting it was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. Plus, I had a lot of home uh, business to do, uh, mostly my garden. Um, that's so, fine. I mean, this is the problem we all have, Michael. It's just that's right. why the Hardwick PD thing's a little late. 
Yeah, yeah. Life I have got one, too busy. <laughs> yeah, I have one more component with the comp time. I just have to figure out the town's part and VLCT's suggested parts. I think they, they do line up. Um, and I'm going to sit down and do that tomorrow and then uh, send it on down um, to VLCT. Um, was there, seems like there was another update, but I think we might have. I was going to give you an update on the Hardwick PD. I did speak there with them. Yeah. They're going to come to the next meeting. So as soon as you can give me a time, Michael, or should I just pick a time? You could pick a time or we could say like immediately after the town clerk and the town treasurer. They'll say 6.15. Or maybe. 6.30. Probably, I'm sure they would be done before 6.30. So let's say 6.15. Okay, so I'll tell them 615. So I, the chief's going to come up with something. I gave him kind of our goalposts that uh, we're replacing the sheriff's thing. Um, mm -hmm. And we were kind of looking at that 15 or less number for a mm -hmm. few hours a week of uh, patrol and uh, uh, some emergency potential response for, for with, with fire and rescue. Okay. Yep. So we'll see what they come up with and then we'll go from there. But I'll, I'll, okay. I'll tell them 615 for the mm -hmm. 28th and I'll remind you when you send the agenda out to put it on there. Okay. All right. And I should Thanks, be able Paul. to remember. In fact, I will make a note right now. Thanks, and Paul. we'll probably have the police chief uh, uh, at that meeting. Okay. All right. Um, and you were going to talk about Ainsworth Road. All right. Just a quick, quick um, update on that. So, they, um, the property owners on Ainsworth Road, were sent a uh, notice of violation, non-compliance with the town's zoning ordinance. Um, it was sent by uh, general mail and also certified mail. Um, as far as I know, the certified um, letter was never picked up. Check with the post office. Um, there, anyway, there was no compliance. Um, there was no um, request for an appeal before the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment. So, tech, and I talked to our lawyer, Michael Tarrant about this. So technically with those things having, having happened, and uh, nothing happening on the um, part of the property owner. It's now in the select board's uh, lap, lucky us, um, mm -hmm. which means basically that we're passing this on to the uh, Washington County Super Superior Court. Um, and Michael Tarrant will uh, walk us through that process. Um, there are some things that I need from um, the town for him to, uh, file this with the Washington County Superior Court. And, and that's also on my tomorrow list at the town office. Um, so um, we'll get that information that uh, our town lawyer needs and he so will- He'll get that process rolling so that our person that's concerned about this just sees movement. Yeah, and of course, and once we get it to the court, it's gonna sit in the court for- Forever, knows, right. Long. Yeah, but then oh, we're good because we've done- We're off we the hook. We, we've yeah. done our due diligence. Um, we're off We've done what we're supposed to do. Right, all that we can do. Um, so that that's pretty much it of uh, that uh, update on on that. Well, thank you for dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know the other uh, the other route that the town will probably take, and it it's again um, is a, a health order. Um, if there's no running water and there's no sewage, there's definitely people living full time in that house. Then um, that's uh, 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 in the uh, auspices of the health officer, which by default I am. Um, is us, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, this, and basically the select board it's too. Us. So, that's us. That's we're so lucky. That's just yeah. you. Yeah. This is all of us. Yeah. So, that will probably be uh, another next step. Um, yeah. So, to, again, I'm a good with just if we need to send an order out, send it and even if we have to hire, uh, uh, what's his name, to come over and Jay, try to Jay inspect. Coffin. and Yep, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna be contacting the health department to just understand the steps of the process. And then if Jay is willing to help, um, I'll, you know. Um, yeah, because again, I put a lot of, it, I'm more than happy to pay him because of your time constraints, because I'm saying you're as busy as I am that right. he, he can handle this, at least getting it to where we need to take action. Yeah. Plus he has don't, the knowledge. Don't, don't take right. too much on you. You're like me. Right, right. Well, it will well, be a learn. Somebody that's used to doing it, then you right. worth some money that just- Right, because I'm willing to just pay that guy, get it get it to the point where we can send our order and then it can get to the court system because you know what's coming. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, it, it will depend on his willingness to do it. Um, so yeah, if he we'll, is, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, that's that's pretty much it on the agenda. I can't think of anything. Is there any other I've any other other business that anybody would like to bring up before we adjourn? This has no additional. Okay, sounds like the dog does. What what what's his that's my dog. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to talk he's to voting. his dog. <laughs> <laughs> we could have them barking back and forth yeah. on Zoom. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Okay. I still have a motion to adjourn. All I'll right. Second that. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Or I guess we should have discussed it too, but the dogs are discussing. <laughs> okay, good. Happy. So I guess we're done for tonight. <laughs>